When it comes to phalloplasty, one of the most common concerns is with the erectile device, the final stage of phalloplasty. So in today's video, I'm going to address some common questions and concerns that you've sent in to me. Hey folks, it's Finn. Welcome back lovely people. Thanks for tuning in to another video. So today's vlog is another phalloplasty update where I'm gonna be talking about the phalloplasty implant device, the erectile device. So I hope it goes without saying that this vlog will likely be a little bit TMI. So if you're not up for that, please do navigate away. I won't be offended. But before we get up close and personal with Finn Jr, for anybody who is new to my content, a very big welcome. My name is Finn and here on this channel and on my accompanying website, I make content about gender transition, LGBT life, mental health and well-being. So if you've been watching for a while and you're enjoying my content, then please do support my channel by hitting that big red subscribe button just below. So a couple of weeks ago, I made a video where I shared about being two years post-op from having the phalloplasty implant device fitted. And I just talked about how things had healed, how I was learning to use the device. And I put the call out to ask if you wanted to ask me any questions about the device. And I put a poll up looking at what was the common concerns for people. And as you can see, the most common concerns are about having mechanics inside your body and about the reliability of the device. You all left me lots of different comments, questions and concerns about the device. So today I'm going to answer those. So when it comes to concerns about having a mechanical device inside your body, lots of people have asked me questions about whether the device causes me any pain. So Ashton has asked, does it cause any discomfort either during sex or when you're just going about your day? Paul has asked something similar, does the anchor point to the bone hurt? Did the doctors mention any risks regarding the anchor point and do you have any pain? And Roman asked a very similar thing as well, does it hurt the pubic bone with the pressure of the device? during intimacy. And the answer to this is that yes, in the very beginning when the device was very first fitted two years ago, I did get in just my day to day going about my day, some aching in the side kind of like into my groin where the device is anchored. And it was just kind of like a dull ache or a muscle ache that kind of came and went. And that had gone by about three or four months post op I think. And what was also happening was that yes, in the very beginning, when I was having self-pleasure or intimacy with my partner, then the pressure of the device would sometimes cause pain afterwards. And that has definitely got better over time as well. And now rarely happens unless I get a little bit too over enthusiastic. So yeah, after a big night, shall we say, there can be a little bit more aching than usual, but otherwise, on the whole, I don't have any pain now. At two years, it's very, very rare. And with regards to the risk of the anchor point that Paul mentioned, it is obviously a risk that the device can break at some point, but how it's been explained to me is that over time, the device embeds in your pubic bone and then becomes stronger and stronger. So it's unlikely to break unless you really do go at it. But I understand the worry because I still have the worry because it, you can feel it where it's anchored. There is that concern of breaking it. But I think that worry, as I spoke about in my recent video, has also got better over time because I worried a lot in the early days. Any little bit of pain, anything unusual was just a case of me thinking, that's it, I've broken the device, it's over but I've learned to trust the device as time has gone on. So as long as you're not swinging from the chandelier from your penis, which by the way, I don't do, it's gonna take a lot to break it. And there's a lot of other general questions about having a mechanical device inside your body. Adam has said that it's not the device itself that concerns him, but having to have one and that he can't imagine having to stop to pump himself up. Yes, it does need some negotiating. And I really hear that and relate to that because there is still a lot of sadness in me that I have to have an erectile device. Grieving for a body that should have been mine 
and never has been, is part of transition. And I've had to get used to the fact that if I want to have a penis and I want to have an erection, that I then I have to have phalloplasty and I have to have an erectile device. But it is a process of acceptance. And then once you come to accept it, you can then learn to embrace and love the erectile device and learn to use it. And as I said in my recent video, I've got used to it now. I've got used to how to work with it. And with the pump, you can make it part of foreplay. I can actually do it myself quite quickly when I'm just kissing my partner. I can be kissing him and have the other hand pumping up my device. And I can do that quite deftly now on my own. But it can be part of foreplay and just brought into a situation. And now it doesn't bother me at all. And another question from Roman here, who again is mentioning the worrying concern around having mechanical parts inside your body and Roman says, I'm just scared of it moving and damaging or hurting me in some way. And I'm also scared it'll hurt to pump it up. And again, absolutely, I can really relate to thinking about this device and it being inside us and then what if it goes wrong and it ends up damaging something inside me. But it, it's such a kind of contained device and it's very securely anchored as well. So the likelihood is something will come loose or stop working but there isn't much it can do in the terms of damage. Of course, with anything, there is risks and it's always worth talking to your consultant about this. But lots of this is, once you feel secure in the risk factor and ready to go ahead, the next step is just getting used to this part. And like I said earlier, just trusting it, trusting that it isn't going to break, that it is okay. And then those fears gradually lessen. I had fears in the beginning about you know, was I going to hurt myself by pumping up? And actually it did hurt in early days when I was first learning to pump because there's a certain way you have to hold it, hold your testicle to use the pump. And in the beginning, I kept slipping quite a lot and that's rather painful. But you soon get used to the technique and you learn to trust yourself because in the beginning, I was really worried that, you know, I might over pump or just press it wrong and break something. So again, a lot of this is about first making sure you know all the risks so you feel confident in your decision. And then once you're confident in your decision and you've had the device, the next bit is learning to trust that device and being patient that this takes time to get used to this being in your body, in how it works, and knowing that you can use it confidently and that it won't break. And now, by the way, it doesn't hurt at all to pump it up or let it down. It is just really easy and I don't even think about it. I had a really poignant comment by Heath that I really want to talk about as well because Heath says that I'm not able to have one, which is frustrating, but that he was worried about the erectile device and having the prospect of mechanical parts inside that could go wrong. And again, lots of people saying the same thing and I absolutely understand this concern and it is a case of balancing risk with reward. I really, really wanted the experience of an erection. So for me, the risks were worth it to have that erection, but it's always, always so important to weigh these things up. But what's the most poignant about Heath's comment is that Heath can't have the erectile device and he really wisely talks about how we just have to learn to accept our body's limitations and learn to love them for what our bodies can do and what our bodies do give us. And this is really key in every aspect of phalloplasty really, because often things are out of our control and often we can't have things we want. And even when we have got them, they might not be forever. Like with the erectile device, which I'm gonna talk about more in a minute, in terms of it needing replaced. And I know that I'm gonna to have to come to terms with the fact that the device will fail at some point and then have to face what to do about that. So when weighing up your concerns about lower surgery, you do have to bear in mind that things might not go completely your way and be able to be open to move into a new acceptance of your body where things are outside of your control. So that nicely brings me on to the other concern about this device in that it does need to be replaced. It doesn't last forever, which is a very, very sad and challenging fact to get your mind around, especially when you're an older trans person. 
So lots of comments and questions on this aspect. And Jamila says, could you please let me know if after phalloplasty, you need to undergo every five years for surgery to replace the penile implant? Quirildon has said, I've heard it needs to be replaced every so often, and that sounds stressful. Marmalade Atkins has said the same thing, the length of time it lasts, how many faults it could have. This is the concern. And the prospect of more surgery after all of those years to get there and then to have to have surgery again 10 years later. Absolutely relate to that. And Boba Fett, epic name. Did they tell you that the pump needs to be replaced at some point or only if it breaks? Important bit in the end of that, I'll come back to that. And the farce awakens. We have a bit of a Star Wars theme today. Oh, I wonder if it's because of the lightsaber. Yes, the need for small surgeries to replace the device concerns me a bit. So loads of you are concerned about the device needing to be replaced and how much effort that seems to take to go through all of that surgery and then for it only to last a few years before needing to go through it again. And this was and still is my biggest concern too. It is a fact that yes indeed the device will need to be replaced. A erectile device does not last forever. Whether you choose the rod or the pump device, both need to be replaced at some point. The length of time for a pump device is somewhere around five to 10 years, more commonly the earlier end of that spectrum. So for me, as a 47 year old man, I could be looking at surgery again in my 50s, 60s, 70s and realistically I am done with surgery. So yes as I said in my last video I am still on the fence about whether I'm going to get my device replaced or not. I knew this before I went into it and as I've said before I just wanted an erection and I'm just viewing it that it's there for as long as I've got it and I'm going to enjoy it while I've got it. Who needs an excuse? But it is a really big thing to come to terms with and it's gonna be heartbreaking when it happens and I know that and I've prepared as much as I can. Now in terms of the question from Boba Fett about can the device be left in when it stops functioning? Now I guess it depends on what's gone wrong. If it comes loose, it will likely need to be taken out, replaced in order to make it safe. But say perhaps the button stops working or it just doesn't pump anymore and it's safe, it just doesn't work, then you might be able to leave it in. And this is what I'm actually going to find out. And the reason for this is the device actually gives my penis some substance. Before the device was fitted, Finn Jr. was quite flexible and bendy. And with the cylinder through him, he's got a bit more rigidity. And I can self-pleasure with him like that still. I could before, but it's better with the direct erectile device in. I mean when I'm not erect. So even without the ability to have an erection, I would still be able to have pleasure. I wouldn't be able to penetrate unless I use some other devices, but having the erectile device left in, even not working, would be beneficial to me. So I'm gonna find that out, but I would imagine as long as nothing's unsafe there and broken in a way that could damage you, you could then just leave the device in rather than going through surgery. But I will find out and I will let you know. Other concerns with the device are, of course, the issue of infection and rejection. And I've had a question from Jake around that who asks, I've had lots of anecdotes from people who've had infections and have needed it removing. And this was a big concern like a few years ago that often when a device was fitted, a body would reject it and you'd have lots of infections and so on, it'd be dangerous, so the device would have to be taken out. That is happening less and less than it was, but it is still a concern. So yes, then you must be very, very aware after this surgery of anything that looks like an inf infection to jump on it quick. I was super vigilant for about the first two months and so scared of getting anything slightly damaged and risking getting an infection. But I think the materials have got better, as it has antibacterial coating on devices, which means that the implant being rejected is much less of a risk. It's impossible to say how much the risk is because it depends consultant to consultant, surgeon to surgeon, country to country. So please do ask your surgeon or consultant 
for the statistics of that if they've got them to hand, then you can balance out your risk. But at the end of the day, all the best statistics in the world, you could be the unlucky one that ends up getting an infection. So I would just say be as informed as you can in your country and who's gonna do your surgery and the risk rate, and then do everything you can to look after yourself. Things like not smoking, not drinking, good food and diet before and after surgery, all of those things will help reduce the risk of a rejection. And the final question here is from Finn, not myself, Finn Duddy, who asks, do people have to have the fallow implant device? Absolutely not. Like with every trans surgery, it is completely optional. A lot of people choose to have a phallus created and then don't have the device because of these other risks and concerns. And then there are devices you can use such as penis sleeves to give your penis enough erection to be able to have penetrative sex. People do make it work. So absolutely not. If you don't want the device, then absolutely that is your choice. And it's worth just discussing all of these things, all of your concerns with a consultant, with other trans people, to help you come to the best decision for yourself. I really, really do hope that was helpful. I know how difficult it is to make these decisions, so I'm always really, really happy to help. And there are lots of ways you can contact me for support and advice and to ask questions. You can leave your comments in the section below. You can contact me over on my website. On my website, I also have the option of having a coaching and mentoring session with me. I do lots of work with people who are exploring lower surgery options. I also have the option on my website to just ask me one question if you don't want a full mentoring session. So there's lots of ways if you want to chat with me about lower surgery concerns like these. So do get in contact, I'm happy to help. Also, as I mentioned in my last phalloplasty update, I have taken the brave decision to start adding some extra phalloplasty resources over on my Kofi page. And the implant device demonstration video over there has been very well received and lots of people are really appreciative of it, which I'm so grateful for because that makes the vulnerability a little bit easier to manage. So if you're interested in that, there will be more videos to come. So I'll put the link to that underneath as well. Thank you so much for watching folks. If you've got this far and you haven't yet subscribed, please do so and also give this video a thumbs up. All of these things really do help to support my channel and keep me doing the work I do. Take good care of yourselves, keep on keeping on and I'll see you next week.